almost fell backward. <laughs> There's a wall behind me, but I almost fell back. Finna talk about some horrible shit. Finna talk about some horrible shit. I just got demonetized. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Uh, today we are talking about an audiobook that I read, Bad Call, which I'll put right... I think I'll put right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll go away in a minute. But, I read this, I uh, listened to this book over the course of, I think, a month and a half. I think it was November, Goodread said I started on November 21st and I ended it on January 9th. I listened to it about 30 minutes a night, not every single night. Um, I never wanted to stop it. It was a great listen. Uh, Mike Scardino is a terrific storyteller, if nothing else. Um, I've, if, in case you don't know, I worked in an emergency room setting for many years. I worked in a hospital setting for double that. So half my time at the hospital I spent down in the emergency room. And I saw much of what Scardino talks about in the book, the gangrene, the maimed, mutilated bodies uh, from car accidents, that kind of thing, burned up bodies, uh, dead babies, that kind of thing. Um, but we also had a morgue on site, so the babies would, the babies would come, even stillbirths would come in. And I laugh, it's not even gallows humor, it's just my reaction to those kinds of situations is to laugh it off. That's one of the things that I appreciated with this book, is he talks about how those types of situations affect you how real life situations affect you and that's one of the reasons why I write and read uh, fiction uh, because I get I get bothered by listening and seeing seeing the stuff that really happens so I don't watch too much um, as far as like documentaries things like that about terrible shit um, I try to look for the positive on that side now I did want to read this one because my buddy Barks um, Barks books I think, and, and reads or something like that. She's on Booklight, she's on Goodreads, she's on Twitter. I'll link to her account down there. But uh, she read this and she liked it, so it had to at least be decently written. And I wanted a bit of solidarity, a little flashback to how, you know, what to a time when I worked in that type of field. And I got all that, of course. Um, there's a couple interesting bits that I didn't mention in my written review, which was uh, the, the fact that they, they only got gloves for maternity patients um, back in the 70s. I had no idea. My mother um, was a nurse in the 80s. Well, she was a nurse all the way up until, I think, 2002. But uh, she was an LPN. Um, and she, they, they had to wear gloves for everything. But I, I think she started as roughly, I think, 85, 80, either between 82 and 85. I can't remember exactly when. But um, mom, if you watch this, I'm sorry. But uh, so in the 70s, the only time they got gloves what Scardino says is when they had to deal with maternity. My question was, if you had gloves on there for the maternity, um, were, they, were they not disposable gloves? What kind of gloves were they? I had a lot of questions about that. Um, why could you only get gloves? Did you have to pick them up at the hospital on your way to go take care of a maternity? It didn't sound right. Um, why only a maternity? To make sure that the baby didn't get sick? I'm pro That's probably it. Um, but... Uh, one thing that I thought was funny, and I actually visually flinched, I physically flinched um, <laughs> when I saw it. I went over to go, since I listened to this in the audiobook, I didn't pay too much attention to the cover. Um, and the small type up at the top is a James Patterson blurb. And I was like, ooh, we like some of this, the, so we, we, we have a mutual like here, and that just, that bothered me. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible. Um, but I, I would recommend this book to not medical, pro I, I, unless you want a bit of solidarity like I did, um, just hearing a fellow uh, hospital or medical professional talk about things that you've probably seen over and over again, unless you want to hear that, this book is probably not for you. I would definitely recommend it to anybody who wants to be an EMT, um, anybody who wants to work in the emergency room, anybody who wants to work in a hospital, I definitely recommend this book. Um, or anybody who is interested in real carnage, because he does a terrific job of explaining and describing the carnage that he sees. He also does a good job, and this is what kept me the most interested. He also does a, he's just a good storyteller. He gives his side of things, he gives his own unique perspective, his own thoughts and feelings. And there's some legit scenes in here that made me legitimately cry. Um, that 
there was some very, very hard... I don't care who you are. A dead baby, a dead infant will always be sad. Um, I hope, anyways. Um, I don't like to say if you don't feel something, you're heartless. But I feel like that's one of those times that if you don't feel something toward a dead infant, you might have issues. <laughs> but, anyways. Uh, I wanted to end this review by giving one of the most... Uh, I think the most tragic stories that I ever faced when I was in the ER. Of course, I'm not going to give any names. I'm not even going to tell you the hospital that I worked at when this happened. But I was working down there. I was drawing blood for... I was just on call kind of thing. Um, phlebotomy at that time. I was what was called an NST, a nurse support tech. I was a CNA that also drew blood because the hospital was cutting corners. So all the CNAs got a blood draw um, class. And I was down there drawing blood and a nine-year-old girl came in uh, with half of her face missing. Um, and I mean missing, looked like some Hellraiser shit. Um, the skin had been completely torn off. But I know it was, a, it was a, almost a completely clean tear. Um, like, right down the center, just this side was missing. I also recall the grown man standing outside the, the door while they were cleaning her up, just sobbing. Uh, come to find out, that they had been driving along. I had to go in and take the little girl's blood, of course. That's the whole reason why I was in there. But the whole reason, what what, what happened was, is she was sitting up front. She was far too small, even for a nine-year-old, to be sitting up front. We discussed all this afterwards also. She was sitting up front, and he rear-ended somebody. The airbags deployed. He had the passenger airbag on, and when she hit, she must have went like this. The airbag came up and just tore all this off. Um, the most horrific thing I have ever seen in person, and yes, it did remind me of the Hellraiser movie, the, the skinned, skinned people, um, but she would need, um, I can only imagine how much plastic surgery she would need to try and recreate, because it was the entire side of her face, and she wasn't even done growing yet. Uh, I think that was one of the most tragic things, other than the, the SIDS, the crib deaths that came in, um, that would come through the ER, just passing through um, or ones that had died in, either in transit, or ones that had died, you know, in the hospital. Those were, those were bad, and it seemed like they always came in bunches. Like, we would get, uh, and for the longest time, I thought it was something in the water. You know, something going on, or, you know, something going on in the atmosphere, or something like that, that would kill all these babies at the same time. Is that there was no logical explanation for it. And that's one of the things that Mike Scardino goes into in more detail in his book. And if you want to hear about stuff like that, definitely pick this book up. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! If you're still hanging around, I'm sorry, that was so depressing. <laughs> but one thing I want, to, I want to get out to those of you that hang around after the outro is, you know, and I feel bad doing it. But the, the laughing during this review, talking about terrible shit, um, I'm not heartless. It's just the way that I deal with, with terrible shit. Um, maybe I am heartless to an extent. I'm desensitized by all this madness and things. And I don't even know if I'll leave this part in or if I'll cut it. Um, but it just, it feels, sometimes it feels like I have to defend myself. And maybe I do, maybe I don't, but... The, the way that I cope with things, I've seen a lot of terrible shit in my day, working in hospitals, um, just, just in real life. I mean, I had a friend um, killed in front of me when I was young, when I was real young. I think I was like, 9 or 10 years old, it's after I got bit by a dog. But uh, I've seen a lot of stuff happen right in front of my face, and the only way you get past those things is to either joke about it or forget it. And I have a really, really good memory for visual visual things. Um, I, don't, I don't forget faces, that kind of thing. And these images get stuck in your head, and the best way I have found is to just kind of try and laugh them off. Um, so if you were upset with that, I, I really, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for the way I am, but, you know, just know that I don't find this stuff really funny. I just laugh it off. Anyways, I've gone on far too long. Um, but, yeah, if you've read this book and you'd like to discuss this stuff, or if you know what I'm talking about, once again, talking about solidarity here, if you know what I'm talking about, leave your comments down there in the doobly-doo. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.